Elsewhere, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has confirmed that the mutual defense treaty between Japan and the United States covers China's Diaoyu Islands. In other words, he made it clear that Article 5 of the treaty, which obliges the United States to defend territories under Japanese administrative control, applies to the islands, or as Japan calls them, Senkaku. Today, the minister and I discussed the security situation, and I made clear that our long-standing policy on the Senkaku Island stands. The United States will continue to recognize Japanese administration of the islands, and as such, Article 5 of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty applies. Well, a day before, China's foreign ministry urged the United States to stop making false remarks regarding the Diaoyu Island and China's sovereignty. Spokesperson Liu Kang said the Diaoyu Islands and the adjacent islets have been inherent parts of Chinese territory since ancient times. He said this is an unchangeable historical fact. Liu added the alliance between Japan and the United States is a product of the Cold War which should not be used to infringe on China's rights. China is urging the United States to take a responsible attitude, stop making incorrect remarks, avoid making the issue more complicated and bringing instability to the regional situation. Also during the press conference, the U.S. defense chief commented on the South China Sea and he said he was happy to let diplomacy do its work in finding a resolution. There is no need right now at this time for military maneuvers uh, or something like that that would, uh, that would solve something that's best solved by the diplomats. At the same time, freedom of navigation is absolute and whether it be commercial shipping or our U.S. Navy, uh, we will practice in international waters and transit international waters as appropriate. So at this time, uh, we do not see any need for dramatic military moves uh, at all. Well, at the same press conference, it was also reported that the U.S. Defense Secretary said that Iran was the world's biggest state sponsor of terrorism. This comes as President Donald Trump slapped fresh sanctions on the Islamic Republic's weapons procurement network. Mattis made the remarks in Tokyo and added that the U.S. had no plans to increase its number of troops in the Middle East. The U.S. imposed sanctions come days after Iran conducted a ballistic missile test. In response, Iran's foreign ministry said that the sanctions are inconsistent with U.S. commitments and in contradiction with the spirit of the U.N. Resolution 2231.